All right, so as I record this podcast episode, there is a storm brewing outside. Um, it is not only windy and rainy and all of that, there's a flood watch. There is the possibility, maybe a slight possibility of hail. And I'm here in Northern Cal- California where we don't get a lot of hail. Uh, sometimes we get it. But even um, more you know, bonkers to me is the idea that we might get a tornado. So there's a tornado watch in my area. Very rare. Um, and as I say this, I'm not just sharing it just to like tell you what's going on in my life, that, that it is a part of it, um, but to let you know the environment that I'm in as I record this. And it's interesting to me because as I talk about creation, creation isn't done in a vacuum. It's done with stuff going on in our lives. There's a lot of energy going on in our lives. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that today, how the energy in our lives can affect the act of creation. Uh, But I also want to talk about the energy of creation itself. What is the creative energy like? That's what we're going to talk about. We'll start talking about the creative energy. Then we'll talk about how the energy of the world around us, how our environment affects the creative act, and then how to unblock that creative energy. So that's what we're going to talk talk about in this episode. So let's start with creative energy. So it's interesting because when we think about the creative act, it's almost like uh, the image that we might have in our minds, a lot of us, not necessarily everybody, is Either it's just this mysterious thing that happens and we don't know like anything about it, or we might have the idea of like we are a carpenter that is building something. So you have materials, you have the tools, and then you have the action of taking those tools to the materials to actually make something. And the interesting thing is if you are in the if you have the first thing about, you know, the first idea about creation about creating things which is it's just mysterious and you have no idea then there's really not much you can do there is there's a sense of helplessness so it's just like oh like i don't know like maybe it'll come to me with my muse or maybe it's something that other people have and i don't have i'm not creative so there's just a sense of like it's mysterious and i it's unknown and i have no idea and that there's a helplessness to that model or to that like understanding of creativity. But on the other side of it, the, the other image that I shared was a carpenter. It doesn't have to be a carpenter. It could be a bricklayer, but someone who is building something with tools and materials and their own actions. And there's a very different kind of empowerment to this, which is that I can just build stuff with tools. But the, the model breaks down when we get stuck, when we're like, Uh, I got nothing to write about or I've got nothing to share um, in my video, my videos, or, uh, you know, I have nothing to draw or no music is coming from me. I just got nothing. So when you are in that place, then it's just like, well, you know, why isn't it working? Are my tools broken? Are the materials deficient? Is my knowledge of how to build stuff deficient? And so if my, it's my knowledge to, of how to build something, I've got the right tools and materials, but I just don't know how to make something, then I'm going to look for more knowledge. And that doesn't actually help us. We might get more knowledge, but it doesn't actually have us creating something because it's just like, you know, where I'm dry right now. I'm blocked. I, just, I, I'm, I don't know where to get the stuff. And so it's like, well, then maybe it's materials. So like, where do I get the materials? <laughs> totally clueless here. So the carpenter and tools and materials kind of building metaphor for creativity only works as long as you feel like you're really empowered about it and you're just like making stuff. But as, as soon as you get blocked, there isn't much you can do with that model. So the model that I find useful is that it's an energy. It's an energy that flows through us. And I didn't make this model up. Um, we'll talk a little bit about some of the inspiration behind it, but it's 
it's an existing model, right? So there's just an energy that flows through us. This might sound magical or mystical, um, but I, I believe that there's something to this. And uh, the, the word energy gets used by a lot of, um, you know, alternative medicines and, and things like that to the point where now people just distrust any discussion of energy. Um, but I, I believe that that then loses, if you just dismiss anything where people are talking about energy, you're, you're missing out on something that's really powerful. Um, so, so bear with me. If you're one of those skeptics, bear with me here. I'm not talking about some kind of like just out in left field kind of theory. This is actually something that works. So bear with me. Um, so, so how is the creative act, uh, a flowing of creative energy? Um, so let's, let's imagine I... I want to paint. So I've got a huge canvas, right? This is my dad was an artist. He, um, he painted on huge canvases, murals or just big canvases that he would stretch out that would cover a whole wall. And he's got a bunch of paint and in him, he's got some kind of inspiration and he's got this energy that just wants to get out. This is his personal energy, the essence of who he is. And getting that energy out is an act of, not only an act of creation, it's an act of self-expression, and it's an act of love. And so he would take the paintbrushes and he would dip it in the paint and he would just let that energy flow out of him through his arm, through the paintbrush, onto the canvas. And sometimes it would be this wild, frenetic energy, sometimes it would be refined and thoughtful um, and, and there was all kinds of stuff in between. It would be, it could be anger. It could be, it could be love. It could be tenderness and pain and hurt. It could be caring and just appreciation and awe. These are all energies that would flow out of him. They were who he was, something he maybe couldn't express through words, but that he would express through the act of painting. And so I think that could be a really visual way to see, like he was expressing the energy of who he was, the creative energy out into a canvas. But you can see that in anyone who plays music. You know, they're not just by, you know, rote, whatever they've memorized, just starting to like strum on a guitar, technically playing some strings. Yes, there is some of that there, of course. My dad didn't just paint randomly. He practiced for many hours to get good technically at what he was doing but the technical part only helps to refine the expression of of create the creative energy so when someone is playing music you could see that they're putting their passion into it or their pain or their anger or whatever energy that they have um, and so you can see that in musicians who are really playing, they're really getting into it. Now they have to master some technical aspects of it, of course. You can't you know, play music with passion and just not know how to play a guitar or a piano or you know, the trumpet or whatever it is that you're playing. You have to know some technical parts of it, but those are, are some of the least important parts. There's a lot of people who can be good technically, but if they don't let their creative energy come out, then they're just copying. They're like a photocopier. Um, that's not creativity. That is just mimicking. The creative energy comes, even if they are copying someone else's song, when they pour their creative energy into it. And so you can see that with musicians. I think that's really... Um, that's, that's a visceral way to like feel someone's creative energy, but you can feel that in dance would be another really common one. You can feel that in martial arts. If someone is really like allowing themselves to express themselves through the motions to the, through the forms, you could feel that in acting if someone's on stage and there's really allowing the creative energy to come out. Now there's the technical parts of acting, but there's also just like what shows up for them in that moment when they are on stage 
in that scene with this other actor, with that audience's energy. What shows up in that moment is going to be different each night if they're on stage, for example, or every time they perform the same scene. We don't know what's... That actor doesn't actually know what's going to show up. They're expressing something that is um, indefinable. It's an energy that's coming out of them, and it is who they are, at least who they are in that moment with those circumstances, with what's going on in their lives, with who, what their childhood was like. And so this is an expression of ourselves. And it's the same with writing, too. We just don't see it as much because we don't see the writer you know, moving with that kind of passion as much. But you can feel it in the words. These words were an expression of the writer. Now, of course, they have the technical side of it as well. A writer has to learn how to write, how to use the language. But beyond that, there is there is an expression of their the energy of who the writer is. Hemingway was very different than Faulkner, very different than Shakespeare, very different than Edgar Allan Poe, very different than Maya Angelou, very different than Sylvia Plath. These all are writers who had technical prowess, of course, but they were able to express the essence of who they were through the creative energy onto the page. And you can see, like, Maya Angelou was really a great example of that. She, of course, has technical, technical competence, a great technical writer, but what she expressed was the creative energy of who she is onto that page. And it, it impacts you. When you read that energy, it gets transferred to you and, and you feel it in your heart. You feel the energy of who she is. And so I say all of this not to say we need to be my Angelo or Shakespeare, whoever it is, Edgar Allan Poe, but really to say that they exemplify what creative energy is. And, and so does a conductor of an orchestra or someone who is writing music and or lyrics. Anyone who is expressing creative energy is doing this. And we can see this. It doesn't matter what your technical skill is. Of course, I mean, it does matter. But we can see this in, in all levels of technical ability. When we're not so caught up in the technical aspects of how do I write out these words? What does a chapter need to be structured like? And all of these things. But we just allow the creative energy to come out. Um, something magical happens. Okay. So... That is the creative energy and how the, the energy that is expressed in a creative act. But what you might notice is that's not always available to us or it doesn't always feel available. You might sit down, you've got a blank page and now you've got to express something and it's just like, ah, what do I do here? And it's not so easy. This is the dilemma is like, okay, there's an... A, expression of my creative energy of my of the energy of who i am onto this blank page but nothing is coming and i feel blocked i feel like i don't i don't have anything and so when we get up against a block like that which is very common right you might already be experiencing it just like i know i'm supposed to be drawing something right now but i got nothing to draw or just like i don't know what to do when we're up against that what do we do what we can call that is a creative block. And there's a number of ways to approach this. Uh, but the way I'm going to talk about comes from a book um, called The Artist's Way. Some of you might be really familiar with it. Uh, it's by an author named Julia Cameron, who I'm trying to get to come onto this podcast, by the way. So uh, you know, we'll, if I get lucky, I'm going to get Julia Cameron to come on and talk about uh, the creative act. But Julia does a beautiful job in the book of describing the creative energy that flows and how that can get blocked in a number of ways. Uh, and then she has a practice called Morning Pages, which is really famous. And so we're going to look at that practice. I'm not going to say that you need to do exactly the practice that she recommends, but we're going to use it as a model for how we can unblock our, our creative energy. So um, what are the ways that we get blocked? We get blocked when we have fear. 
So I talked about that blank page or the blank canvas or whatever it is that you're up against and you're just like, ah, I got nothing. What we, what we're up against is I have to step into the unknown and pour out my soul, which is a lot of freaking pressure. (laughs) And I don't know how to do it. I don't know if it's going to succeed. I don't know if anyone's going to like it. I don't know where it's going to come from. I don't know what, you know, like what it's supposed to look like. And so all of these fears start to come up. It's like, I don't know if I'm going to be judged. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if it's going to, I'm going to do a good job. These are really fears. Yeah, of course, there's an I don't know here, which is true. You don't know. But the not knowing isn't the problem. It's the fear that comes from the not knowing. When I'm in the unknown, in the not knowing, fear shows up. And the fear blocks us. It closes us down. It's like it's like if you have this nice open heart that is just like, I am open. And then all of a sudden, fear says, shut the hell down right now. And then boom, your heart closes. That is the block in your creative energy. When your heart is closed by the open, you know, blank page or the blank canvas and the fears that come up, you can't really express your creative energy much. You can't express who you are. You can't express the love that you have that you want to get out onto that blank canvas and that blank screen. So that is what blocks us. Now, there's a lot of you know, it's not just the fear of the unknown that's right in front of us with this blank canvas. It's a lot of other things. I talked about the storm that's outside right now as I record this. Um, The chaos of the world can close our hearts, block us. You know, if you, we've got family crisis going on right now, if a loved one is in the hospital or I have to take care of an aging parent or a sick kid, or I myself am going through all kinds of you know, health problems that are shutting me down, or my sleep is really bad, or my boss has been like a total dick to me, or um, I'm having marital problems, or um, I'm just you know, feeling overwhelmed by everything that I've got going on. All of these kinds of things, you know, there could be you know, fighting in Palestine or in Israel or, or Ukraine or starving somewhere else, and you know, politics going on in my country and the pandemic and coronavirus and so forth, all of these things, they impact us, of course, and then they shut down our hearts and they block our creative energy. And so we can just say, well, then I'm helpless, right? There's nothing I can do about that. But if we understand that these are the things, fear and chaos and overwhelm and negative things in our life are shutting down our our hearts and blocking our creative energy, blocking the expression of who we are, blocking the expression of our love, then we can understand maybe there's something I can do about it. I can't do anything about everything that's going on out there. Not necessarily. Maybe I can do some things with my marital problems or help my kids or my aging parents through stuff. Yeah, there's some things that I can do. But I can't stop all of this stuff from happening. And I also don't want to stop being impacted. If I shut down the ability to be impacted, what I'm really doing is putting up walls. And sometimes walls are helpful. But I don't want to fully stop myself from being impacted by the world. That is me just hiding from the world, saying I don't ever want to be impacted. Being an artist, being a creative type, being someone who is creating in the world means we have to be willing to have our hearts open and have have our hearts be impacted by what's going on around us. So let's imagine you just, you say, okay, Leo, I'm going to be impacted. And then boom, you're impacted. Your heart shuts down. And then you're like, well, that sucked. I didn't like it. And now I want to stop. So that, that's actually the problem is that we, get, we do have our hearts open. We do get impacted. And then we shut down and we think, I never want to be impacted again. And that is just because we don't like being with 
the feeling of being impacted in that way. If we are heartbroken and disappointed by the world or by other people who we trusted, we don't like heartbreak. We don't like disappointment. If we are feeling overwhelmed and afraid, we don't like feeling those ways. If we're feeling helpless, we do not like feeling helpless. I can guarantee that's true for most of us, the vast majority of us, 99.99%. We do not like feeling helpless in most circumstances. Uh, even though our actions might seem to say otherwise, it's like, well, you're creating helplessness in your life, but you do not like to feel it. So we don't like feeling helpless. We don't like feeling disappointed, heartbroken, sad, angry. Um, we don't like feeling these things. And so we try and stop ourselves from being impacted or we just shut down and say, I'm not doing anything. It's all done. And which is another way to, to not be with those feelings and not be impacted. So what can we do instead? Well, first of all, when we are impacted, we can say, actually, this is my heart feeling something. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling lonely. I'm feeling upset. I'm feeling like angry or resentful or just own the feelings. Your heart has been impacted. Own the feelings. And then even see something amazing about those feelings. It's like, oh, that's actually an energy. My heart being impacted. Sadness is an energy, just like creativity is an energy. In fact, I would argue that they're actually not so different. Anger is an energy. Grief is an energy. Loneliness is an energy. Boredom is an energy. It's not always nice energies, but they're energies uh, and I am being impacted and I feel an energy and I can just allow that energy to be in me for a little bit. It won't stay with you forever. We know that. None of these things have stayed with anyone for forever. Um, sometimes they stay longer than others and they stay longer usually when we don't want to feel them, when we're resisting feeling them. So if we just let ourselves feel it, what we're doing is we're allowing energy to flow through us. Like, oof. I'm being impacted by the storm around me, the political storm, the you know, economic storm, whatever it is that's going on. Oof. Feel that. Let it, let it be there. Let it flow through you. You might bring some love, which is also energy. I'm just loving myself right now as I'm feeling really sad and impacted by the world, heartbroken. Give myself some love. And then as I do this, what's happening is the energy starts to flow. And from that, I might start to bring that energy onto the blank canvas. Like, oof, I'm feeling really hurt. Let that hurt come out. Express it. Use the blank canvas to let that energy flow out. I'm angry. Okay, great. Angry, anger is an incredible energy. We don't always hold it that way. We're like, oh, I shouldn't ever be angry or people shouldn't be angry. Stop being angry. But actually, it's just anger. So I'm not saying you should use it to hurt someone, but you can just let yourself feel anger and just be like, oh, I'm so mad that this has happened. And then pour that out onto the blank screen, blank canvas. Let that just pour out. Write anger onto the page. Let anger pour out into your music. Just like rage through your creativity. Um, you're hurt by someone. Great. Put that there. You're afraid. You're overwhelmed. Great. Put all of that there. So just let it pour out. Um, as we let it pour out, other energies will come as well. So it's not just anger that's going to come out. You might start to feel what's underneath the anger. Fear. Pain. All of that stuff is under the anger. Anger is just the outermost layer, the most obvious one. But under that, we might start to feel the, the fear that comes under the anger the pain, the hurt, they hurt me. I'm going to pour that out onto the, the page as well. Let's talk about uh, Morning Pages from The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. So this is her method. Um, and I'm just going to summarize the method. Uh, I'd highly recommend that you read the book. Uh, and she's got a new book coming out too that I, I, I think is... It sounds really interesting, and I might interview her about it if I'm able to get her to come on this podcast. Um, but in The Artist's Way, she talks about morning pages, which is, you know, in its most basic form is write 
two pages of something every morning. And what you want to do is just don't worry about the form, uh, like what comes out. Just write, you know, just a stream of consciousness. First you know, thing that comes to your mind, like, oh, I'm having my coffee and, you know, I'm tired this morning and blah, blah, blah. Or I don't know what to write and I'm, you know, this exercise is stupid and I'm so bored with it and I don't want to do this anymore. And I don't want to do this. You just write whatever. And as you do this, what you're doing is you're starting to let some kind of creative energy flow. Energy is flowing through you onto the page. And I wanted to modify this by saying, you know, if you'd like, you can do this through uh, drawing, through, you know, paint on a canvas, through playing music or whatever it is that you want to do. If you want to do it through speaking, if you're an actor, start freaking speaking, acting like you're on stage and start speaking. So whatever your discipline is, just start letting something come out. And of course, do it in private. This this is not a show that you're doing for anybody, although that can be another kind of way to let creative energy flow is do it with others and collaboration. Um, but for this practice, all you want to do is just start doing something, anything to let the creative energy flow. And so if you get this, the, get this going, other stuff might start to happen. Not necessarily. Uh, it doesn't always happen, but sometimes you're just like, ooh, I just written two pages instead of just like check it's done like maybe now there's some creative energy that I can let you know I'm unblocked my heart is opened a bit um, the other thing about it is you're starting to work the muscle every day I write two pages every day I I do five minutes of music practice or sketching practice and as you work the muscle of letting that creative energy start to come out, you, it starts to become more accessible. You have access to creative energy. And so you can, you, you know, you when you get blocked, you can access that anytime now because you've worked this muscle and you're like, oh, I'm blocked right now. Let me just write some random crap for two minutes or 10 minutes and then something else will come. If I just start doing it, energy starts to flow. Oh, and then the other thing you can do to unblock yourself is like, what is... What is closing my heart? What's actually blocking me? Oh, it's some kind of sadness. Let me pour that sadness out onto the page. The other thing that we start to do as we get into a daily practice of morning pages or some kind of creative energy flow practice is that we start to rewrite our beliefs, our stories. If we have some old beliefs, and this is also something that Julia talks about, some old beliefs that I can't be a creative person. Your messages passed down to us from parents and teachers and others, uh, media, peers, you know, student, classmates, whatever it is. We get messages sent to us and they start to get ingrained in us. I am not a creative person or creative people are crazy or creative people are weird. Creative people are, you know, whatever it is that we've been told. Um, we have these messages ingrained in us. They are our story about being creative, about the creative act. When we start to do the, this morning pages or some kind of creative flow practice, we are rewriting our creative, a story about creativity. So I would love for you to get into a daily practice of some kind. Morning pages would be the basic form. Write two pages every day. But you can do an equivalent practice like that. It's a meditation. It's a form of therapy, a form of journaling, a form of... But don't do it with a gaining act in mind, a, a gaining idea. Like, I'm going to write this and it's going to be a great blog post. No, it's something you can throw away. Don't do this and I'm going to write this and... It will, um, it will lead to me writing the most amazing book in my life. No, just get into the practice of letting the energy flow through this and you will start to shift something for yourself. Shift the energy that's been blocked, shift the story, shift the, the muscle of being able to do something about it when you're blocked. Okay, that is what I'd like to, wanted to share with you around... Uh, the creative act and the creative energy and unblocking that creative energy. I hope this was helpful. 
I encourage you to take on a practice every day of some kind of unblocking of your creative energy. Thanks, my friends. Thank you.